Hey everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Ava Gaudet. And up next in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, I will be talking to the co-founder of Mixed Magic Theater. They are opening up their current season with a very cool double bill of two plays that they're uh, presenting kind of simultaneously at their theater. And uh, I am happy to talk to Ricardo Pitzwiley. Ricardo, come on out. Hi, how are Hi, you doing? I'm doing great. Thank okay. you so much for coming back. We actually had you here on the show earlier this year for yes. your Pell Award win. Yes, yes, that was that was a it was a big, great night, wonderful time, and I'm uh, I'm very proud to have uh, received the award. Yes, well, you're a, a great contribution to our arts community here in Rhode Island, and uh, it is wonderful to have you back. So Glad thank you so back. much. So let's talk a little bit about Mixed Magic Theater's new season. Um, this is a pretty, uh, you know, big deal to do two shows at once, very ambitious. What was the reasoning behind uh, wanting to put on these two plays at the same time, Dutchman and the Slave? Well, there were two reasons for it. Uh, one of them was we, we uh, received uh, uh, facilities bond grant funding to do some renovations with our theater. And so we were able to put a soundproof wall between our, our larger theater and our smaller theater. And uh, so this gave us an opportunity to, to kind of try it out. Could we run two shows simultaneously mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and be effective that way? Uh, and the, the Amiri Baraka plays Leroy Jones, formerly Leroy, <laughs> Leroy Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, Dutchman and the Slave fit what we needed. Also, um, it was. It gave myself and my son Jonathan an opportunity to both direct the show. It gave us an opportunity to work with some really, really fine actors. Um, well, kind of low impact in the sense <laughs> that didn't require a lot of great big production values right. and things like that. But also the, the work was so timely. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this work, uh, both of these plays, really have been credited with kind of launching. The, the black theater movement in the, in the, uh, in the mid 60s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just as relevant today as they were when they were originally written. Uh, uh, the times have changed. You know, you know sometimes, you know, you know, the Dutchman is about something that continues to repeat over mm -hmm. and over again, a cycle, the flying Dutchman story, and, and so on. Uh, the slave, on the other hand, really begs the question of who is enslaved and by whom? What mm -hmm. enslaves us? What enslaves us all? Uh, and, and the nature of social revolution and, and, and political upheaval and, and relationships. And it's all about relationships, too, between people and, and stories that they have to tell about themselves. Yeah. So I hope that's a pretty good description. I think that's an excellent <laughs> description. And as you said, you um, you directed The Slave. While I did. Your son, Jonathan, who is the artistic director that's of right. uh, Mixed Magic Theater, he directed Dutchman. Right. As, as family members directing pieces by the same author, do you feel that you have similar points of view? Do you feel like you're able to sort of set these apart? Well, we both uh, approach the work differently. Uh, the way he works with actors is a little bit different than the way I work with actors. The material, we, we both were interested in the, in, in, in the material um, just for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, we, we share some same political interests. We, he's a historian mm -hmm. like I am in, in many ways. So, so there was a historical perspective of doing the plays. Um, uh, but the main thing that is how do you make it, you know, which we both approach the work the same is, how do you make it relevant right now? Yeah. Not, not a historical perspective of the show. It happened, it was written in 1964 and all of those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. you, you have to ask the question, why is it important today? Well, why are we doing this play? How do we make it immediate for an, for an audience today? Right. And, and they're relatively short plays, so... In fact, they're very short. Uh, uh, Dutchman is about 45 minutes, and oh. Slave is about an hour and five minutes. Um, but, but, but it also gave us opportunity to start asking the question, where does the theater experience begin? Hmm. And, 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 and how does it end? 
do you do you do you save time, allow time for the audiences to to uh, to digest and be a part of the experience after the show? How do you get them involved before the show even begins? Mm -hmm. And th I think that that's that's not a, just a question for mixed magic theater. That's a question for theater in general. Right. Where does the experience begin? Because I think in many ways. There are other entertainment outlets, especially professional sports, that are doing a much better job of, of defining for the audience where the experience begins. Hmm. So even in our renovations of, of, the, uh, of the space with the, with the bond money, which I'm very uh, I'm happy to say the Navigant Credit Union was <laughs> one of our chief supporters of this event, uh, of that project, and we're very happy to be a partner <laughs> with them. Um, um, we, we started asking ourselves as we were building, build, doing the build out and things like that, how do you start the experience right away? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get, a, get ask a person who comes in off the street and how do you adjust their mood, adjust their attitude, get them into another kind of uh, uh, state of mind so that they can really enjoy the theater experience? You know, and, you know, if you ever go to a Patriots football game. <laughs> which I have. Which, you know, <laughs> you know that the experience really starts on Thursday. Yes. When you start checking the weather and right, you know you start course. you know if you're going to tailgate who you're going start with planning. and uh, yeah. plan planning day babysitters <laughs> all of those kind of things what to wear yes. all of those things who they're playing uh, um, you know we we have to do the same thing with the theater and you know we're looking at ways of, of, of returning some 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 of that before the show starts experience uh, uh, for instance. People used to dress up to go to the theater. That's true. And and we hear people all the time say, God, you know, I wish I could dress up. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to create dress up nights where, you know, we encourage people, put on your nine to five. But you also have to plan for that time after the show so that they could, they didn't just put on that nice clothes <laughs> for an hour experience. They, you know, it, it lasts a little bit longer. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's other type of nights that you, you, you know, dress down night, you know, just, you know, <laughs> just, just, you know, you don't have to dress up, you know, to, to come on this night. Uh, uh, little items, you know, you know, one of the things that we're thinking about is like, uh, we have cobbler night. Hmm. Now, you know, so on that night, we're going to, before and after the show, we're going to serve peach cobbler or blueberry oh cobbler goodness. or, you know, or something. Count me in. Something. <laughs> but you see, that's exactly what yeah. we need our audiences to start doing. Be counted in. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, you know, uh, we're looking for other things that uh, expand what we're doing also. And our musical uh, presentations, our lobby is, is fantastic. It has a baby grand, grand piano in it oh, and, beautiful. and beautiful seats and, and nice lighting and all of those type of things. We're going to be initiating a program, look, hopefully in as early as January, called Easy Like Sunday Morning, which is just a jazz brunch from 11 to 1 with a jazz DJ and a live artist. Oh, I love you know, it. You just, well, just relax, bring your newspaper. We're going to have coffee <laughs> and crumpets. It's not, you know, we won't be, uh, even though we have a full kitchen in, in the theater now, uh, it'll just be, you know, t coffee, tea, and crumpets. I, and, yeah, uh, I love that you're, that you're really trying to establish as a theater company, really a community, a community vibe that this yes. is, um, you know, it's almost like a big family and that you're going to be putting on, you know, things. It's a happy place. Involved. And also, we have to make sure that we find those things. That we encourage people to bring the kids, bring your parents. Uh, uh, I mean, they, they, there's a there's a place for everybody. Not right. not everything is going to be good for the kids, you know. <laughs> you know, but those things that are good, we want them to be real good. And 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 we're looking for opportunities to put more young people on stage, not just in kid shows or young people shows, but in an experience where they're working with an adult actor, right. where they're responsible. To, to learn the craft mm. and learn the discipline of being in the craft and also give them ownership of the stage. You know? yeah. I, I think many theater organizations, including Mixed Magic Theater, we have to do a better job of giving young people ownership mm. uh, of, of certain parts of the space with the expectation that 
that in 10 years, 15 years, they're going to inherit it. They're going to have to carry that legacy on. They're going to have to do that work, and they've got to be ready to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and even with the Dutchman, uh, with Dutchman and the Slave, we're, we're incorporating a lot of young people behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get them involved, teaching them. We, we have a great lighting system. We have a great sound nice. system. Uh, we have a, you know, a beautiful front of the house. And, and, and not, but not just young people, because <laughs> young people, I love young people. I really do. <laughs> I, 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 I love working with them. But they won't stay if they don't see adults that they are going to ultimately inherit the thing from. Mm. Young people don't stay where they don't see the future. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't have stayed. And, and I've been an actor for more than 40 years now. In my early experiences, had I not seen evidence that the, there was a future for me on the stage, I would have right. I would have been a lawyer for one thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I saw that evidence, mm. and and now it's is is and now as we pass the baton to a younger generation, my son, mm -hmm. his wife, who uh, who is our music director, uh, who's she's brilliant. She's just brilliant. Uh, uh, Hope High grad, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, we have to pass that, that torch on. But you know, the interesting thing about passing the torch, you got to give the whole torch. You can't, <laughs> you can't give a little give a bit little of piece. it. You can't say, oh, well, we're kind of going to give it to you, but not really. Yeah. Um, uh, I tell people all the time when I introduce Jonathan, who's our artistic director, that's my boss. Hmm. And, and people say, what's it like you know, uh, working for your son that way? It's great. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been a leader for a long time. Yeah. I led my family, you know, for a long time. But now to be to be saying, okay, where are you going? I want to go where you go. Because, you know, because that leadership, you know, you have to trust that they're going somewhere, that yeah. you have prepared them to go somewhere, even though there are times when you look at it and say, I would have never made that decision. <laughs> I would have never made that decision. But... Because there's a, a story I tell often about about brick about walls. You know, when you're raising kids, you know, you see a brick wall in front of them. They're running full speed, and you say, you know, there's a brick wall there. You know, you say there's a brick wall there, and they run boom, they hit it, and they say, why didn't you tell me there was a brick wall there? Well, I did. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Okay, then the next time they run, and you, know, you say, I'm not going to say anything, and they hit that wall, and they obliterate it. They mm -hmm. go right through it. And you realize it wasn't their brick wall; it was yours. And, and when, and when you when you come to understand how that works, particularly in the arts, mm -hmm. you open up the, the the wall gets shattered, and you look on the other side and say, "Wow, that's some pretty cool stuff over <laughs> here." But also, it doesn't in, invalidate what you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, sometimes it reinforces what you know. You say, "Wow." There's the things I've been teaching and advocating for, for forty plus years. They're still relevant. Right. They just take a they took a different form, a different shape, a different energy. Right. And uh, uh, so I'm excited about about what Jonathan can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I really. Feel I have to also mention my wife. My, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my wife Bernadette is is you know has is the glue that holds everything together. I mean, she's a she's not only is she a gifted artist in her own right, but she's she just works hard to 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 make things possible. Mm. And and sometimes, you know, I don't have to turn around to check to see if anybody's got my back. Yeah, <laughs> I she's am one hundred percent <laughs> secure in that. And and mixed magic theater has survived for almost twenty years now, yeah. in large part because Bernadette Pitts Wiley just put the energy and time and talent in it and the courage it takes to, to make art happen. I think that is one of the most compelling things about Mixed Magic Theater, that it is a family organization. Yes, you can is. feel the love of what you guys do as a family. Um, obviously, this season has so much more to offer, and the yeah. more that we get involved as a community, the more yeah. we get to participate in that. So everyone, uh, you can check out the uh, schedule for Dutchman and the Slave, which is running until November 26th yeah. at 
uh, mmtri.com. That's it. <laughs> I was like, make sure I got that right. Ricardo, thank you again for coming on, back on the show. Uh, really pleasure. happy to be able to um, promote Mixed Magic Theater in this amazing double bill and upcoming season. Thank so you very thank much. Thank you so much. We've got uh, some great shows coming up in, in for the rest of the year, too. So. Yeah, and Exalt Choir has some oh, stuff coming boy, up. So Exalt definitely Choir, check yeah. out the website and stay involved with what Mixed Magic Theater has to offer this year. Uh, I will be taking another quick break to set up for my next guest, so please stick around. We will be right back.